Good morning and welcome. Today's Torah portion for Monday of Lech Lecha. We learned that Abraham and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, arrived in Egypt. There was a famine in Canaan. And Sarah was beautiful. She was taken to the palace. And the king intended to have his way with her. So we learn now in 14, as it comes down, by he it came to pass. Kivo Avram Mitzroyma, as Abraham arrived to Egypt, just as feared, by Yidu HaMitzriim Esoisho, and the Egyptians took one look at this woman, Sora, Kiyofa, he Ma'ot, she was beautiful, and immediately, using their blackberries, they sent a text to Pharaoh saying, we have a good one for you here. And that was the decadence of Egypt. Rashi, Vayehi, Kivo Avro Mitzrayimo, Hoyo Lolomer, he should have said Kivo O Mitzrayimo, when they arrived. Why does it say when he arrived? Where was she? The answer is she was hidden in the secret compartment of his luggage. El Alima, this teaches us, Shehit Minaisa, he concealed her, Beteva in a box, but they had the new x ray machines from TSA. The tax people, the customs people, they never let you go, the customs people. Because the customs people demanded taxes, Poschu they opened, as they used to say when we used to cross from New York into Montreal to Canada. You have anything to declare, eh? That was the way they talk over there. You have anything to declare, eh? Vero, so and they saw her, so they found her, and that's how the message got to Pharaoh that there is a beautiful woman crossing the border. As we read in 15, And the officers of Pharaoh saw her, and they praised her to Pharaoh, and they said, This is something special. So the woman was forcibly taken, base Paro to the palace of Pharaoh. By they praised her amongst themselves, Lamar saying that this woman has beauty, fit for a king. Haguna Zayla Melech, she is fit for a king. Now the good news is, and we talked about the whys and the whens in yesterday's class, but the good news is, is that Abraham did not introduce himself as her husband because he would have been killed. And that can ruin your whole day. He introduced himself as her brother. In that case, he was having a very good day. They were giving him all kinds of gifts. 16, Ula Avram, Haiti Bavura. And Abraham benefited due to her because he was the brother. By Heloi, and he now had sown sheep, Uvokar, and cattle, Vachamorim, and donkeys, Vavodim, and male servants. Ushwachis and female servants, Vasinis and donkeys, female donkeys, Ugmalim and camels, all kinds of stuff, because he was the brother of this beautiful woman. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, 17, Vayanaga Hashem Espar. Remember, we talked yesterday, why wasn't Avram concerned about Sora's welfare? Because Sora was a great prophetess and a great. Tzadikah, she was a very saintly woman. She was one of the seven prophetesses in the world. So he wasn't concerned about her. He was concerned about himself because he was too humble to believe that he was worthy of a miracle. He had no doubt that she would be worthy of a miracle. And in fact, we find in 17, the miracle unfolding. Vayanaga Hashem Esparo. God plagued Pharaoh. What kind of plagues? There's a cute story they used to tell many, many years ago that they, uh, they took this Jewish boy into the army and they said, and if you were waiting right there and the enemy was coming all of a sudden and they popped up, what steps would you take? And he said, big ones, <laughs> very big ones. So what kind of plagues did God bring upon Pharaoh? Negoyim Gedalim, big ones, very big plagues. Yes, they say, and upon his entire household, good morning, welcome. 
Al Devar Sorai Ashis Avram, all because of Sorai, who was really Abraham's wife. So Hashem brought plagues, big plagues. 17, 16, 17. What kind of plagues did he get? He was smitten with a skin disease. When I was young, they used to say you had to call Wolfman Jack, if you're old enough to remember that. It was impossible to engage in intimacy with this disease. So it made her safe. Al Dvar Sorai Al Pidibura by her order. She was the commander. A Medes Lamalach. She would tell the angel, Hach, hit, smite. Be humak, and the angel would smite. So this was a pleasure. It was like remote control. So Pharaoh understood that this is not so simple, and he began to suspect maybe he's not the brother. Because if she was a single woman, what's terrible? She's willing. A choice she has. 18. By Yikra, Farai Lavram. So Pharaoh called out to Abraham. By Yemer, and he said, Mazay Sosisoli, what have you done to me? You got me into a lot of trouble. Lomo he got it to me. Why didn't you tell me? Kiishtachahi, that she's your wife. I figured out she's your wife. 19, Lomo Marta Achesihi, why did you say she's my sister? And I took her to me as a wife, and now I got all kinds of plagues. I got to go to the dermatologist and all that stuff. Viato, and now I'm through with this woman. Hine Ishtacha, take your wife, Kach Valech, take her and go, and Gegezun to hate. You're out of here. Question is why he didn't say, hang around my country, you have VIP status. Rashi explains that. 19. Unlike the story later, we learned with Avimelech, king of the Philistines, where a similar story happened. But Avimelech, Sha'amarle, said to Avram, My kingdom is open before you, and you have VIP status. Pharaoh was hesitant to do that. Pharaoh didn't trust the Egyptians. He figured sooner or later she'd be raped by somebody. And the entire country would be punished. Ela Omar he said, you go, leich go. Vi and don't tarry, don't hang out. Shamitsriyim shtufe zimahema. Because the Egyptians cannot control themselves. They're overwhelmed with lewd tendencies. They're just all over the place. Shanamar Ezekiel expresses it very poetically. Their issue is like the issue of horses. So, you know, look what she's up against. So, if you listen to me, take her and sayonara, you know, out of here. Ken, by Yitzab, all of Parianoshim, Pharaoh put a whole contingent of officers to guard her, by Yishal, to guard them, by Yishal Chawesai, and they escorted him, they sent him off, yes, Yishti and his wife, yes, Kol Ashalei, together with all his wealth. But the good news is that Abraham suddenly was transformed from a pauper to a very wealthy man. He had as much money as Bill Gates. By Yitzhavol of Alay Deisav, about him, the Shalchei, the Shomrei, to send him and guard him, by Yishalchei, and they escorted him. So now Abraham leaves Egypt a very wealthy man. All because Pharaoh was going to marry the sister he never had. That's a good way to make a living. It's a Ponzi scheme if I ever saw one. Chapter 13, verse 1. Vayal Avram mimitzrayim, and Abraham began to ascend, going back up from Egypt, back to Canaan, who, both he, the Ishta and his wife, the Chol and all of his wealth, and again, Velot Imolot was with him, and they all went, Hanegba, to the south of Israel. They headed north, but they went south of Israel. Rashi, Vayal Avram Hanegba, it doesn't mean they headed south, because if they headed south, 
they would end up in San Diego and then in Mexico. <laughs> they went to the south of Israel. Journeying towards the south. To Mount Moriah. However, remember, says Rashi, that when you go from Egypt to Israel, you go from south to north. So for the locals, you've got to take the 405 to Sacramento. Remember that Egypt is south of Israel. As it says in the portions of the journeying and the boundaries, you look at the maps, Google Maps and so on, it's just that it's south of Israel, but he was heading north. Now the Torah testifies that Avram was quickly transformed into a very wealthy man. Doesn't take a lot of time to make a lot of money. The Avram covered me'ed, and Avram was very rich, very heavily laden with wealth. Bamikna, he had mucho cattle. Bakesef, he had mucho silver, or bazov, and gold, and commodities, and all kinds of stuff. Rashi covered me'ed, toun masois, he was laden with burdens. Abraham left Canaan a short while earlier, poverty-stricken. He was a pauper. He didn't have anything. His credit cards were maxed out. And here he's a wealthy man. Verse 3, Vayelech lemasov, and he went on his way, Minegev, from south of Israel, the Ad Beisel, towards Bethel. Ad Hamok came into the place, Asher Hoyashom. Oh, hello, his tent was Batchilo in the beginning. Where was that? Bain Beisel or Bain Ho'ai, between Beisel and Ai. That's where he was when the famine broke out. And God told him, go down to Egypt. Three, very important Rashi, three. Vayelech lemasov, and he went on his journeys, the simple interpretation we learn, says Rashi, etiquette. This is a lesson in etiquette. When he returned on his way back from Egypt, heading to Canaan, heading to Israel, he stayed in the same motels that he did on his way down. And this is interesting, because on his way down, he could barely afford a Motel 6, where Tom Bodette left the light on for him. That's what he did on the way down. But on the way up, he could afford a Rich Carlton of Four Seasons. However, this is etiquette that loyalty, customer loyalty, stick with the Motel 6. The Torah teaches you etiquette. A person should not change hotel chains. Why? Because he gets points. You get married points. Because you need to be loyal. Because loyalty is a virtue. Just because you make a couple bucks, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be loyal to the hotels who gave you credit on the way down. They tell a cute story years ago in the garment district. There was a guy who was struggling, and he sends a telegram to his supplier. He should send him more stuff, more and more merchandise. So the supplier sends him a telegram, I'm sorry, I can't afford to send you anything until you pay what you owe me. You owe me a lot of money. So his response in a telegram is, I'm sorry, I can't wait that long. I'll have to go to someone else. <laughs> So when the guy is nice enough, whoever's not laughing here does the same thing. <laughs> so, so when the guy is nice enough to give you credit, you have to have loyalty. Dabar achar, another interpretation. He stayed in the same motels because on the way back he paid up his debts. Because he did everything on credit. And on the way back, he said, here, Baruch Hashem, I'm able to pay up. This is the, the portion of the bar mitzvah of, of my son, Eli, many years ago. And I remember to this day, my father, a blessed memory, coming right here and celebrating with us. 
and I gave him the honor of speaking at the Bar Mitzvah. And he spoke on this Rashi. And he said, that there's a very important Medrashic interpretation which applies to all of us. All of us who take the long, hard road. And he shared that when he was a young man and, and he had come as a kid from Eastern Europe to America. He came when he was 13. And uh, nobody was walking around with a uh, Hasidic look. He was the first young man in New York who grew a beard. Old men had beards. Young men didn't have beards in the 1930s. And then when it came to uh, getting married, who's going to marry a, a young man with a beard? And uh, the whole nine yards. And, and, and he was looked down upon. And, and he says many years went by and all his relatives and all of uh, my mother's relatives who saw that Baruch Hashem, he established himself, he became a rabbi in a respectful synagogue, raised a wonderful family. So all of the criticism that was given over all those years, what are you going to do? What are you going to grow up to be? The most you will be, they used to say back then, is a milkman in Williamsburg. You'll deliver milk in Williamsburg. What are you going to be? You've got to become a mensch. He says, we learn from this Rashi, where the Medrash says, that Abraham went down from Canaan to Mitzrayim. And everyone said, look at Abraham. God promised him, leave your birthplace. Leave your father's country. Come to the land. I will give you wealth. I'll give you everything. You're going to be the most blessed man in the world. Everybody was talking behind his back. Look at him. He's starving. There's nothing to eat. He's traveling to Egypt. He doesn't even have a credit card to pay his motel. So people began to badmouth God. Bachazirosay on the way home. Poro hakafesav. He repaid all of these debts of character assassination. And everyone said, look, look, Hashem does come through. Look, in no time at all, Abraham is not only successful, he's wealthy, he's respected, he's VIP. That sometimes the long road takes a little longer, but ultimately when we stick with Hashem and we stick with the program, then Hashem ultimately repays the debts of those who criticize those who are devoted to Torah and mitzvahs and say, what kind of life are you leading? And that was the speech that my father gave at my son Eli's bar mitzvah, encouraging the bar mitzvah boy, encouraging us all to stick with the program, even though sometimes there's difficulties, because Abraham also had difficulties. People badmouthed him. Bachazir On the way back, Pora HaKafesov, he repaid all of that talk, and he proved everyone right, and he saw that he, his lifestyle was a godly and successful lifestyle. Minegev Eretz Mitzrayim Bidrei Mashal Eretz Canaan. The land of Mitzrayim is south of the land of Canaan. That's why it says Minegev. Okay, verse 4. El Mekema Mizbeach, he headed to the place of the altar. Asher Osa Shom Berishena, where he was the first time. Back there. Vayikra Shom Avram B'Shem Hashem. And Avram called there in the name of God. Simple meaning is Avram said, thank you to Hashem. For Asher Osa Shom Barishen of Asher Korosh Shom Avram B'Shem Hashem, where Abraham called in the name of God. V'gam Yeshleim of Ikr Shom Achshem B'Shem Hashem. He also called there now in the name of God. Now what we also learn here in the teachings of Hasidus, and this is a theme in the first discourse of the Rebbe after Yud Shvat, when the Rebbe became Rebbe in 1951, he talked about the fact that we learn from this verse, our sages say, Vayikra Shom Avram B'Shem Hashem, that Abraham called there in the name of Hashem, Al Chikra Vayikra, our sages say, don't read the word merely as Vayikra, Ela Vayakre, he caused others to call in the name of God. That Abraham, Avram Avinu, taught monotheism to the world. Avram Avinu did not suffice by sitting in his office and studying Torah. He went out and brought godliness to the world. And the Rebbe then talked that it's not appropriate and not correct for us to sit and to live a happy life with our family 
and we should remain in Crown Heights or in Kfar Chabad or wherever the center of Judaism is in Borough Park and in Williamsburg, but we have to bring Judaism to the whole world. And already in that discourse, the first moment of his accepting the leadership of Chabad, the Rebbe said we have to emulate Abraham. Al tikro vayikro elo vayakre, that the true expression of Judaism is causing others to recognize there is a God. And that's when the Rebbe called for shlichus, for young men and women to go east and west and north and south and bring the message of kindness and goodness and godliness to the world. And that is based upon the Medrashic interpretation on this verse. Al tikra vayikra elav ayakri. End of Chumash portion.